Okay, this is, finally, I was able to do uh, or get a card, a memory card from a student uh, who has a high-definition video camera that doesn't do uh, .mts files, it does uh, movie files. Um, so we're going to talk about how to convert a um, high-definition video that is not an MTS. Um, the cool thing is that um, this will also work if your f uh, if your camera does uh, AVIs as well. So I've seen a few video cameras that do AVIs. This one is a Nikon, um, and it shoots pretty decent uh, 1080 uh, image, <coughs> and uh, it, it, um, it shoots movies. Uh, the first thing that I did, actually, was I opened one of these up in QuickTime. So I just double-clicked it, and I got it into QuickTime. And you can see it's a pretty large file. <coughs> And then one of the things that you can do is you can uh, show movie inspec inspector in QuickTime. And this kind of gives me a good sense of what the movie is going to look like. Um, and really important here is the frames per second, um, 29.97. <clears throat> and the reason why that's important is because um, uh, a lot of high definition stuff is shot at 30 frames progressive scan and some of it is shot at 60 frames interlaced. And so I, I think it's important if you're going to be doing high definition footage that's an AVI or, the, or a dot movie to open it up in QuickTime and check out what the frames per second is. That frame rate could be very important when we start converting it. Um, in this case it's 29.97 so that's really easy. So now we can quit QuickTime. The other great thing about this process is it uses our good old friend um, MPEG Stream Clip because <clears throat> MPEG Stream Clip can, can convert high def files as well. And really, the, the, um, the process is identical to what we did for the .mod files off the Canon cameras that are standard definition. The only difference is that in order to keep it um, uh, high def, the ending codec that we have to you know, save to is a little different. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go, whoops, get back into MPEG Stream Clip. I'm going to open up a batch list, bring it over here and uh, check automatic start, highlight all these files, and uh, drag them in. <clears throat> and now what's going to happen is uh, you're going to get your, um, your task. Oh, before I continue going, one of the things that I also recommend you do um, is, is back up these files. So you should open up the Media Students folder, um, or in my case, the Media Staff folder, get your project back or film backups folder here and create a new backup for this. So project one, um, let's see, it's September 29th. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> and then I would copy all these in here. Now you'll notice that they're pretty big, it's 800 megabytes. Um, it's going to go pretty fast, but um, high def files are going to definitely be a lot larger than, uh, than the standard definition files. Um, so I'm going to cancel this off the MPEG stream clip <clears throat> and then uh, do this right because what I think is always important when you're transferring video is not to use the SD card if you can possibly help it. If you're going to be copying these things over to the network as a backup anyway, it makes more sense to use the backup folder than to actually use the SD card. SD cards do burn out. They do have a lifespan that can be you know, moderately short if you use them a lot. Um, and it just sub subjects them to a, a lot of abuse. So I think it's much safer to take the original movie files and just copy them to a backup folder uh, in your account on the Media Students folder or uh, sh server, and then that way we'll, we'll actually use those to, uh, to do our, our, um, our conversion from. So it's almost done here. <clears throat> and then I'll just eject the SD card so that we're not abusing it too much. I think that's you know just a little safer, really, to do that. La -di -da. <laughs> 10 seconds doesn't seem long, but it is. Five seconds is even longer. Okay, I'm, there we're good. So I'm going to eject my SD card here. See you later. Thank you very much. Pull it out of the computer, and I'll go put it in a safe place. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to take these files that I have that are in my backup folder in my account on the media server. I'm going to highlight them all and I'm going to drag them into MPEG Stream Clip. And now it's basically <coughs> very similar. We're going to export to QuickTime 
And here's what's important. You have to choose a scratch disk with your name in it. Um, <clears throat> then the capture scratch is in here and make a new folder for that. So project 1, um, 2011, and then today's date, nice and easy. And again, I use the dates for this so that I'm not accidentally saving over top of the old files. You know, again, that's a mistake that a lot of people make. Um, if you shoot again with this digital camera and you, you know, let's just say three weeks from now, you've shot a lot of movies and it's rotated back through uh, the, the numbers and now all of a sudden you have another DSC 1250. If you plop it in the same folder as this one, uh, you're going to overwrite your original. So it's important to kind of, um, you know, have separate folders based on the date. I just think it's a lot, lot better that way. So I'm going to hit select. Here we go. <clears throat> and now's the major difference. This is the major, major difference. Here, instead of what we normally go to, would be DV, DVC Pro. If I were to select this, what's going to happen is it's actually going to scale down. It's going to shrink the video down. What Final Cut Pro uses as its codec for uh, high definition video uh, without having to render every other second is Apple ProRes 422. You could also use Apple HDV, um, but the problem here is if you notice the HDV, each codec has the frame rate sp specified. Um, and we don't have a true 30 frames per second codec here. We have or in, our original files are 29.97 frames per second. It's called a drop frame. Uh, frame rate. So you don't really want to use that. So just use the high quality 422. Make sure the quality is set all the way to 100%. There are no options that you have to worry about because it's not, you have to worry about anamorphic or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that could help you a little bit here, um, let me just open one of these back up in, in QuickTime, is find some motion in the clip and you might want to look for, um, well, that's not a good one, you might want to look for um, uh, uh, interlacing, telltale interlacing. So as, the, as you have action, if you had interlacing, you would see the door's position here would be different every other line of pixels. And that's what interlacing does, is it basically does a, um, uh, you know, every other line of pixels is a different frame and uh, you would basically see a jagged edge. It would be very, very obvious in motion. If something's standing still, like the house here, we wouldn't see interlacing because that's the same from frame to frame. So you have to use motion to see it. I wish this was interlaced because then I'd be able to show, show you an interlaced signal, but it's not interlaced, which means it's a little bit of a higher quality uh, uh, video signal. Really good high def cameras will sometimes shoot at 60 frames per second interlaced. So the nice thing is, you know, here that we're just going to use Apple ProRes 422 and we're going to leave the frame rate blank. And what that'll do is it'll just keep the same frame rate as what you have in the source signal. Um, and essentially there's nothing else to do. You want uncompressed stereo um, uh, audio, uh, unless your camera does something really fancy like, uh, I don't know, onboard surround sound. I, I haven't seen any of those come through here. Um, and then we, we just have to figure it out. But I don't even know how that would work um, with MPEG Stream Clip. Might not even be able to see that. We'd have to figure that out on our own. Um, <clears throat> and since there's no interlacing in the video, we do not need to check deinterlace video. We're just going to leave it be. And that's about it. So we're just going to hit two batch. And then it's going to process through all the clips. And it's going to start going. And you can see it's really fast. Um, and part of that's because uh, these are relatively short clips. But also part of that is because it is already a movie file. If it was an AVI file, it might take a little bit longer to, um, to actually go through. But this is actually a, a movie file, which means it's um, shot with some type of a, of a codec that QuickTime can understand very easily. Um, oh, it's H.264, which is, uh, you know, pretty, that's native to Max in QuickTime. And it's pretty easy for them to, to understand and transfer. Um, and for all I know, 422 may be a, 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 a version of H.264. If you were to import these files, these .movie files, directly into Final Cut Pro, I think they would actually probably import, but then the problem is you're going to have to render every time you do something really simple, um, which would really stink. So as you can see, we're, we're going, we're going, we're going. I'm going to stop the process here because we really don't need to see them all go. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's just import them into Final Cut Pro. Just kind of show you something. So there we go. Okay, we'll just stop. That's, that's good.
um, and it's going to finish this last one, and then it's going to wait. OK, so now we're just going to quit out of that. Yeah, quit. Thank you very much. Um, and let's, let's open up Final Cut Pro here. And then actually, I'm going to try importing one of these uh, movie files that's from, my, um, that's from the backup folder. And I'll show you. It'll, I think it'll come into Final Cut Pro, but then when I drop it down on the timeline, it'll, it'll, um, uh, it'll need to be rendered because the compression's too, too uh, hard. It's, there's too much compression for the video to actually um, uh, be changed on the fly with, with Final Cut Pro. So let's just try. Let's just import a file here. And if I go to my backup folder, there's Film Backups, Project, OK, September 29th. There we go. Let's just let's do this one that's a little longer. Let's open this up. And it, it comes in. And I can double click on it. And I can scroll through it and everything like that. But if I drag it down here, you can see the red line, which means that I can't just play. I can't just hit play. It's it's not going to let me do that because it's an uh, it's not a rendered file. Um, so by converting it to Apple ProRes 422, we're not going to have to render it every time. And so it's still.